so our first uh, question is from Jennifer. It was the last asked on the just as I left the office, and it's uh, I would like to ask whether if we have a human rights act, will we end up with the dreadful situation in the USA where criminals get away with horrendous crimes because there are so many clauses their wily lawyers can get them off on technical grounds? The short answer is no, and to explain why, the United States has a constitutional bill of rights, which means the judges have the last word. They can strike down laws as being inconsistent with the Bill of Rights. What we're looking at in Australia is a so-called dialogue model in a statute, not in the Constitution, which means that Parliament is sovereign, Parliament makes the laws. The most the judges could do would be to say, we think this is inconsistent with human rights and Parliament should have another look at it. So you wouldn't have that problem in Australia. Great. Thank you. The, uh the questions, there are a few questions that people were interested in about the actual process, so the consultation process itself. So Pamela asked Father Frank, were there any issues to emerge during the consultation process that you found surprising, or did things go pretty much as you imagined that they would? I suppose the most surprising thing was the strength of individual feeling about the key economic and social rights of health, uh, education and housing. And they came forward much more prominently than the right to work. Now, strangely, in Australia, we have quite good architecture in place for dealing with the right to work. But those other three rights, it would seem, are uh, rights that aren't much addressed in the federal architecture. So that was a bit of a surprise. And definitely, for us to be true to what we were hearing from the grassroots, though there's a lot of legal and constitutional complexity about economic and social rights, we thought we had to do something about them and therefore we had to investigate how the Human Rights Commission might have a role to play. Another thing was that we were a bit surprised that there were not many of the sort of key indigenous legal scholars who came forward mm -hmm. with submissions, though we did get a lot of submissions in the end from grassroots Aboriginal organisations, but that made it very difficult for us in the end to look at recommending like particular indigenous uh, cultural rights uh, particularly given the strength of the research by Colmar Brunton, which shows that the Australian community has a strong antipathy to the idea of special rights for special groups. Mm -hmm. And that's why our focus then had to fall really on the issue of self-determination and the limits on that right in terms of special measures that might be instituted with things like the Northern Territory Intervention. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe just sticking on the Indigenous rights subject then, because there was a, a, a few questions asked on that issue. Basically, one was asking how, I mean, you've, you've basically just dealt with it, but in relation to, so Don asks, how would you propose to ensure that Indigenous rights to culture and land and language are upheld in a proposed act? Because one of the things about the report is the Indigenous rights uh, are in a separate section of the recommendations to the Human Rights Act section. So I wonder if you... Yes. Well... What you'll find in Chapter 9 is, yes, there's a separate chapter on Indigenous issues, but in the end it's about recommendations around the idea of self-determination and its limits and the way in which we can get better partnerships going between Indigenous communities and government. As for other rights, basically our approach was to say that if the human rights of all Australians could be enhanced, mm -hmm. that that in itself would be good news for Aboriginal Australians. We concede that there are still questions about distinctive Indigenous rights, but there is a plethora of complex land rights legislation and cultural protection legislation already in existence. So the question is whether or not there are lacuna or gaps in that legislation which would need to be filled by a Human Rights Act. Now, our view was we didn't hear from a sufficient number of the Indigenous legal scholars to move that forward in a truly self-determining way. Mm -hmm. It would have been fairly gratuitous for us as a committee to presume to extrapolate beyond what we'd heard in the submissions. Mm 